Most of you have probably heard of Helen Keller, who can neither see, nor hear, nor speak, becoming totally blind and totally deaf and unable to speak due to a violent illness as an infant. She nevertheless became highly educated, graduating from Radcliffe College, and was a notable author, political activist, and lecturer. She lived from 1880 until 1968. 100 years ago, in January of 1916, Helen Keller spoke in Menominee, Wisconsin, in the North Park of our diocese. The Dunn County News reported on her lecture. They write, a message of optimism, of hope, of good cheer and of loving service was brought to this community on Saturday, a message that will linger long with those fortunate enough to have received it. This wonderful girl who has so brilliantly triumphed over the triple afflictions of blindness, deafness, and dumbness gave a talk with her own lips on happiness. Keller spoke of the joy that life gave her. She was thankful for the faculties and abilities that she did possess, and spoke of the joy of service and the happiness that came from doing things for others. She stated that helping your fellow men is one's only excuse for being in this world, and in the doing of things to help one's fellow lay the secret of lasting happiness. When giving her lectures, Helen Keller would sometimes invite questions. On one occasion, someone asked, Miss Keller, if you could have but one wish granted, what would it be? Instead of answering in the expected response of being able to see or hear, she replied, I would wish for world peace. That answer showed the spirit and greatness of her soul which was not unlike the reflection of the soul of Jesus himself. Oftentimes, Jesus prayed for peace and would greet his followers with the word, peace. In today's Gospel reading, as he sends the 72 out in pairs, he tells his disciples to say, peace be to this house, as they enter in dwelling. What does Jesus mean by peace? It isn't just the absence of war. Rather, the peace that Jesus gives means freedom from trouble. It means health. It means a secure and contented life. It means all the spiritual and material gifts God will bestow on his people. In our first reading, Isaiah describes peace, security, and contentment as a mother nursing her infant, a child being cradled in his mother's arms. He writes, as a mother comforts her child, so God will comfort you. In the second reading we heard Paul proclaim, may I never boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. All that matters is that one is created in you. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life. The cross that Paul boasts of, of course, is the cross of love, our Lord's self-sacrifice of himself for our salvation. Peace is an important word in the Bible, often associated by St. Luke with salvation. The Hebrew background of the word peace stresses completion, perfection found in God and in all God's blessings. The peace of Jesus could be imagined as living in a tranquil land where everyone loved God and each other because they realized that they were all sons and daughters of God. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life. This weekend, we celebrate the 240th anniversary of the founding of our nation. I think most of us here today would share Helen Keller's 
wish for world peace. Not only peace in the whole world, but certainly in our nation, our community, and in our homes. I believe our founding fathers held the vision of Christ's peace when they wanted to create this new republic. That vision is foundational to us and is, as it has been memorized by generations, including all of us, from our early years as school children, as we recited every morning, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. But today, we live among uncertainties, terrorist threats, hatred, strife, selfishness, how easily we can forget why we were created, how easily we forget what God desires and longs for us to become. But people of faith, despite these uncertainties, people of faith know that lying beside all these fears is a force that is transforming the power of God, the power of the love of God. By the very power of God, we can be changed into that likeness of Jesus that was imprinted on our souls at our baptism and be restored in unity with God and one another, one nation, one people, united with God's love. The often repeated message of Jesus is, be not afraid. His great commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. By God's grace, may we learn the way to peace by not only to love one another with compassion and mercy, 